Card cards. What do you think when they are mentioned? For many, images of a woman foretelling the future will come to mind. But can these strange objects be interpreted as works of art? And if so, should we? Multiple artists in Latin America and Europe challenged this conception and went on to create their own decks. Many have argued that the surrealist artists were the ones that drove this obsession as a tool to explore the unconscious. But was that so? What drew them to these unusual objects in the first place and why illustrate a personal set? And an even more interesting question, what secrets lie hidden within their illustrations? To understand, we must go back in time. In the 1950s, three artists in Argentina and Mexico, Sul Solar, Leonora Carrington and Remedios Varo, designed their own interpretation of the tarot, the famous deck of cards used by many for divination and spiritual exploration. Although the cards themselves trace back to 15th century Italy when they were used as simple playing cards, over time they evolved as tools used by those who practice magic, spiritualism and the occult. In the late 19th century, the fascination for these mysterious objects increased as Europe witnessed a resurgence of occult practices and the emergence of some fairly creatively named societies like the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Many of them adopted Masonic and Rosicrucian rituals, urging their initiates to paint their own cards based on an existing deck provided by a mentor. Why? Well, it was meant to help initiates understand the underlying meaning behind the card symbols, colors, and imagery. The idea was that the creator of the cards would use this knowledge as a tool to decode the universe's mysteries and connect with their spiritual path. For that reason, by the early 20th century, the number of tarot designs multiplied as more occultists such as A. E. Waite, Oswald Wirth and Alistair Crowley were all crafting their own. Now, without getting too technical, although most tarot decks have 78 cards, the most important are the first 22 called Major Arcana, representing the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet and the 22 pathways of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, studied by Freemasons and Rosicrucians and various magic orders. This tree manifested the 10 emanations or manifestations of the divine following the journey from our earthly existence towards the infinite light. Now back to Sul Solar, Leonora Carrington and Remedios Varo. By the time they decided to craft their own interpretation of the Tarot, they had already been studying this wisdom for multiple years, diverging significantly from the research pursued by their surrealist peers. Solar, for example, was very critical of the movement and became interested in the occult through his travels in Britain and Paris. They each saw the cards not as mere sources of divination or fortune telling, but as tools that allow them to explore both their conscious and unconscious mind. Now you can see why they decided to design their own, following a similar principle of the previous occultist order, meaning using them as a symbolic map to guide them on a journey of self-discovery and transformation. Sul Solar began painting his own deck in Argentina in the 1950s, influenced by Masonic practices learned in Britain and teachings of the Golden Dawn by the magician Alistair Crowley, famous for his own tarot interpretation. However, Solar departed from Crowley's version as he expanded his reach in the subject upon arriving in Buenos Aires with his friend Jorge Luis Borges. When he designed his, he added elements from his invented language Neo Creole, as well as symbols he captured by studying astrology, alchemy, and the Corpus Hermeticos, a text he studied obsessively. Firstly, Solar painted the Tarot con Coecos Astir, designing 12 cards corresponding to the zodiac signs. He organized them into four columns that represented the elements, air, earth, fire and water, each with identifying colors, blue, yellow, red and green. Solar started his tarot cycle with Gemini and ended with Cancer, opposite to traditional astrology. This choice may have been influenced by Gemini's connection with the planet Mercury, associating it with Hermes Trismegistus. This figure combined the Greek and Egyptian gods for wisdom, language and acted as messenger of the divine. 
As seen in the Gemini card, he depicted the central figure holding a pen and paper as an allegory of the written word, surrounded by butterflies whose wings resembled open books. The figure's head is divided in two, symbolizing Gemini's duality but harmoniously united by a mystical third eye that provides a central column of balance and wisdom. Solar proceeded to paint 12 more cards, completing a total of 24, unlike the 22 proposed by the original Major Arcana, and renumbered them to reflect his own unique spiritual perspective. For example, he assigned the number 1 to the card of Venus, usually associated with the High Priestess, which he represented as a three-faced individual, symbolizing the male, female and androgynous energies. This reimagining infused a tarot with Solar's unique symbolism and spiritual journey. Leonora Carrington also introduced her own spiritual perspectives to the tarot design. While she didn't alter the traditional sequence like Solar, she made quite a few changes to the symbols and imagery they depicted. Despite tarot cards being among the few childhood possessions she brought from England, according to her son Gabriel Weiss, she only began painting her own version after a decade of living in Mexico. Carrington was inspired by her vast library of occultist books, including works by A. E. Waite and Oswald Wirth, both renowned tarot card creators, and her friend Kurt Sellingman on the history of magic. Her son would later recall that it was while perusing Wirth's book, Les Tarots des Imagines du Moyen Âge, that she decided to create her own deck. Carrington's card maintained the structure proposed by her books. However, unlike them, she avoided referencing Hebrew letters or astrological symbols and used Roman numerals solely to identify each card. She also used a minimalist design, assigning a distinct color to each card with complementing black, white, silver, gold and red accents. This would allow the viewer to focus on the symbolic significance of each color and the imagery she provided. An interesting example of Carrington's approach is seen in the Wheel of Fortune card. While maintaining a familiar structure akin to weight and worth, featuring a wheel balanced by a sphinx, symbolizing the dominance of wisdom over force, Carrington changed the figures responsible for its motion. Although the ascending figure bears a resemblance to Wirth's depiction, evoking Hermanubis, a fusion of Hermes and the Egyptian god Anubis, both guiding souls on their spiritual journey, she changed the way she representing the descending figure. Traditionally depicted as a snake or typhoon, Carrington presents it as a creature akin to its ascending counterpart, but in an aggressive stance. This subtle shift encourages viewers to perceive both figures as different aspects of the same force. Additionally, she modified the wheel's content, adding a six-pointed star to symbolize the adage, as above, so below, showcasing the interconnection between the divine and the mundane. Now, Carrington never documented any meanings behind her paintings and rejected any attempts to do so. Instead, viewers were expected to decode their symbolisms themselves. Therefore, although I offer you an interpretation based on my own research of these symbols, I encourage you to create your own version, like Carrington, you could use them on your own spiritual journey. On the contrary, Remedios Varo did not have the same perspective in the interpretation of her work, as she explicitly wrote what several of her images meant. Likewise, unlike Carrington or Solar, she never created her own deck, but would incorporate the tarot symbolisms into her paintings. Before we explore one of them, it is worth mentioning that while Baro may have encountered the tarot through her former partner, surrealist Victor Brauner, it was her friendship and collaboration with Carrington that deepened her appreciation. Over more than two decades, they shared intellectual and mystical pursuits, exchanging books, ideas, recipes, and research. Yet, although they shared a fascination with this knowledge, that didn't limit Vado from infusing her own interpretation, which was quite distinct from her friends. 
Take for instance The Hermit, painted in 1955, where she references the ninth card, symbolizing the journey of self-discovery, introspection and inner guidance. The Hermit's hooded mantle is depicted as a six-pointed star, signifying, as she described, two intersecting triangles representing time and space, the above and below. However, instead of featuring a lamp like Solar, Carrington and traditional tarot cards, Bada portrayed the individual as a star illuminated by its own light, emitting its guiding force within its own spiritual path. Additionally, she incorporated the symbol of yin and yang at the end of the tunnel within its chest, indicating unity and balance within the opposing forces of our lives. In the end, the more we explore the mysteries of the tarot, through the visionary artworks of Sul Solar, Remedios Varo, and Leonora Carrington, the more we understand that their exploration exceeded the surrealist views on the subject, as all of these artists developed it at a time when they weren't even involved within the artistic movement. In reality, Sul Solar was never part of. Likewise, their work allows us to question the limitations we impose ourselves when we perceive and understand art solely as an intellectual process. Instead, they offer us a means to connect with other aspects of our beings and our souls. If you're interested in discovering more secrets about the lives and work of these three incredible artists, I invite you to explore further their groundbreaking contributions in our course great artists from latin america volume 2 for more information please visit the link provided in the description of this video thank you